We're in the midst of a huge transformation where our peers, communities, and workplaces are all really melding into one. Welcome to Reimagining Company Culture. My name is Christina Giordano, she, her, and hers, and I am the Senior Partnerships Manager here at All Voices. Today, I am very excited to welcome our next guest on the interview series, Ali Schwartz. She's the Vice President of People at Mantra Health. Ali, it's so good to see you. If you want to share a little bit about yourself for our listeners, including your pronouns, and when you were younger, do you remember how exactly you answered the question, what do you want to be when you grow up? Yeah. Hi. Uh, thank you, Christina. Thanks for having me. Um, my name is Allie. My pronouns are she, her, hers. Um, a little bit about me. I've been working in tech in New York in a people function for about 12 years. So have seen the industry really grow and change and, and really blow up in the city over the last decade or so. Um, I'm a mom. I live in New Jersey. When I was a kid... Hmm. I think I wanted to be a singer, wanted to be in a band, wanted to be uh, a rock star. <laughs> I love it. Now you're a, a people HR rock star, uh, as they say. Sure. Um, I have a lot of questions for you about your day to day, kind of what brought you into the field as well. Um, I know in our kind of previous conversation, you shared that you were the first HR uh, hire at Montreal Health. What did you tackle mm-hmm. first and how did you really prioritize your day as a strong with my new team of one. Yeah. Um, I think that, you know, when you get started on a, a lofty task, like thinking about how are we going to build the community that's going to build a product or a service and, and become a company, you really have to think about just like any other business function, right? You have to, you have to think about it sort of like for the, the strategy at the top and what is, what are we ultimately trying to do? You know, who do we want to be? And um, like, what do we believe is going to set us up to be um, sort of the the best version of of the company that we can possibly be? And so the first thing I did was really just try and get to know everybody, Um, come in, get a sense from the employees. You know, when I came in, I was employee number 14. So there were, uh, you know, just a handful of folks to really meet and get to know. And the things I really wanted to learn from them were, what do they love about working at Mantra, right? Like, why do they stay there? What gets them out of work or out of bed every day? And then what makes them proud? What's been their, you know, the proudest moment, right? And also what's frustrating about working at Mantra? Um, you know, what can we do better? What's challenging? Uh, what, what, what stands in the way, right? Just to get a sense of what is the culture that came out and, sort of accidentally, right? Like in the culture world, we talk a lot about intentional culture and the opposite of that is the accidental culture that builds up when you are just sort of running an organization without really putting a lot of thought into the company's identity. And accidental culture is usually, you know, based on, in my experience, like the work style, the communication style, collaboration style of just whoever is sort of the most authoritative or the the loudest person in the room, right? And so what we had to uncover was what is the current culture and does that work for us, right? Like, do we believe that this is going to take us where we need to go? And if not, how do we hang on to the things that are working and then, you know, put some dedicated effort into um, really you know, making strides in the areas where we think we need to improve. Uh, So really like coming in, having those conversations and then, you know, kind of putting together a strategy based on, uh, you know, what the employees were telling me was sort of the first step. Absolutely. You really want that feedback, really understand where people are and answering the question, what community are we building and who are we as a company can change over time. And it's different for each organization as well. And we know that. Yeah. The employer brand is really important to current and potential employees. What would you say is really unique about Mantra Health? Yeah, good question. Uh, a couple of things. One, I think um, Mantra was really lucky to be sort of at the right place at the right time. What we do at Mantra is we partner with universities and other higher ed organizations to help expand the capacity of their 
uh, counseling centers on campus with telehealth services. So we have a provider group of folks who, um, you know, offer therapy, et cetera, to um, college age students. So particularly folks 18 to 25. And, you know, uh, during the pandemic, right, like this need just became so acute, right? And, and a couple of other things happened too. One, we started to see that the conversation around mental health just became so much more present and a lot more folks were getting more comfortable reaching out to ask for care, which is wonderful, but also translates to, you know, lots of students, uh, arguably more than ever, like looking for help and for services from their on-campus counseling centers. Um, and then we also saw, you know, because we couldn't leave our homes, right? Like so many um, sort of healthcare services moved to telehealth. And so we really saw that the, the belief in the power of telehealth and the efficacy of telehealth really took off. Um, and so all that led Mantra to really be sort of in the right place at the right time when it came to universities looking for partners like ours. And we were able to pr find product market fit really early. And I think that's super unique in my experience working at startups. Like usually it takes quite a long time. And, uh, you know, it's, it's quite different to work somewhere where the people who are using the tools and the services you're building love them and are incredibly appreciative of them. And where you hear that feedback every day of, the, the problem you're trying to solve, solve by simply existing as a company is getting solved. And, uh, you know, it's just so much easier to motivate people and get people excited when that piece is there, you know, when you, and so I think one, we have that going for us, which is really wonderful. Um, Two, I think, you know, we just have a really great sort of culture of reflection. It's um, transparent in the best way where uh, we really do encourage folks to talk about what didn't go wrong. We, or excuse me, what didn't go right. Uh, we have this weekly ritual on Friday afternoons that we call our highs and lows, where as a whole company, we, we just name the things that, you know, went well that week and the things that didn't go our way. And I think just in creating that space uh, that's, you know, sort of, open and where there's no blame, it just allows people to be innovative and take risks, which I think is like really the name of the game of startups. Um, and finally, I really think something is that to, in my mind is super unique is it's just a fun place to work. And in 2022, I think that is just so incredibly hard to achieve. Um, one of our core values is that we enjoy the process. You know, we don't want to look back uh, in 20 years and say, you know, we built something awesome, but it, you know, ruined our personal lives, right? Or like, uh, or, or something like that. Like we want to be able to look back and say, we did amazing work and we really learned a lot. We had fun. We met people we still have relationships with, you know, like it's important to us. And that comes directly from our CEO. And I think when you have leaders who have that mindset, you're able to really infuse it. And it just makes such a difference to be able to, especially remotely go into work every day and just really enjoy the people that you work with. Absolutely. It is something that's really special, especially right now in 2022. Um, and yeah. so the things that you mentioned earlier in terms of intentionality and dedication, it doesn't just happen. You need to make sure that you're on, you're thinking about this on a daily basis. When you're mm -hmm. thinking about how do you really promote a work environment filled with fun, as you were talking about, and intention and also thoughtfulness and creativity via explicit permission to explore different ways uh, folks can really work and enable them at Mantra? Yeah, I think you hit the nail on the head there. It's really about, I think, um, you know, people people think of culture as like this sky high thing that we, you know, like really work toward, but but can't really put into action on the day to day. And I think so much of culture is really built around the way that people interact with one another. And especially at a small company where we're remote and we don't have that everyday interaction of like natural trust building um, to that just happens to occur when you're all in person, you have to be like very specific around telling folks or, or like, you know, in our case, really designing with the early folks 
how do we work together? You know, what are our expectations of you as uh, an employee, right? Like, what are what is it okay for you to do? What can we give you expl explicit permission to do so that, um, you, you know, you don't have to wonder, like, is this actually okay, right? So, for example, um, you know, we have a, a how we work guide that is in our employee handbook that was written by, you know, some of the old timers and me and our leadership team and, and sort of that we built out around the time the company was about 20, 25 people. And in there, we talk about flexible work, like explicitly encouraging people to um, work at a, on a schedule that works for them. Uh, we also talk about how to work remotely, right? Like there is a, a sort of a science to working remotely. There's psychiatry to it. Like there are things like morning rituals and nighttime rituals that your mind really needs to be able to give yourself the space to sign off at the end of the day, right? To make it so that you're, um, it, you know, like work doesn't creep into every crack in, in your life. Uh, and then, you know, we think about things like um, focus time. You know, when you're working remotely, the, the natural tendency, I think, is just to have meetings all day long and it feels like you're working, right? And you are, but at the same time, especially at a startup at an early stage when you're still innovating and growing, you really need that focused flow time to just do the, the thing that actually is the meat of your job, right? And it shouldn't be that you're in meetings all day and you can't do that till 10 o'clock at night, right? Like, so we encourage people explicitly to block off times on their calendar and we encourage other people and tell them explicitly, you know, don't schedule over someone else's block, right? Like, so we've set up so many of these sort of norms just around like, here's how we want to work together and respect each other's boundaries. And I think that has gone a tremendous way in helping us build a culture that, that like is built around a lot of intention. Absolutely, respecting each other's boundaries is so important and also making sure that you are not pouring from an empty tank as well. Along those totally, days, yeah, as well. Are there specifically for managers ways that you think about really equipping those folks who are leading a team uh, to really keep burnout at at bay as well and be proactive about it? Yeah, absolutely. I think you're the the word you said there that is proactive, and that is like really the that's the name of the game. Like we, I think where a lot of companies get it wrong is you you put these things in place like hey, we offer you this te telehealth service at a, at a lower cost, or we have unlimited PTO, or like, here's the five things we do to support you. And if you don't use them, then that's on you, right? Uh, it's your job. We put them here, you use them. That's the way it works. But what we do, I think, is really take an approach of trying to take like a very like understanding that it's a shared responsibility of the organization and the individual to really not just give you the tools, but make sure you're using them, right? Like we, we don't, to your point, we don't want a group of like, you know, sort of like frazzled, burnt out folks coming in to build our company, right? Like we really believe that the energy that you bring to the day to day is going to show up in the things that you make. And so that's what we want. We want people to bring warmth and excitement and, um, you know, their whole selves to work every day. So we we're super proactive about, you know, every quarter we pull PTO reports on everybody to take a look at like, you know, who's actually taking a break. Um, you know, if somebody hasn't taken much vacation, we like arm their managers with that knowledge so they can reach out and say like, Hey, you took no vacation this quarter, right? Like, let's talk about when might be a good time for you to take some, uh, like in the coming months. We also um, proactively do trainings for all our new employees to make sure that um, they have the tools to support one another, right? Like it can be really hard, especially when you're working remotely, if you notice somebody's having a hard day to just know how to say, hey, you look like you're having a hard day. Like, can I do anything for you, right? Like sometimes just, just teaching people like that, those one or two like pieces of language can go such a huge way um, to encouraging folks to be mindful of each other, right? And give each other grace and things like that when, when you know, like think tempers flare up or what have you. So, um, you know, those are just a couple of the things we do uh, among like a wide array. 
Absolutely. Having those common languages, having the tools to really uh, support your team members as well and have that support for managers too, to have those really authentic conversations. You also go another step further too. And I, I want to ask about this as well and how you really have codified and built in employee wellness, both mental, physical well-being yeah. to OKRs uh, for each quarter. Yeah. So we, you know, one of the things as we were sort of building our, our people and talent strategy was really looking at the market, right. And looking at what do folks, you know, coming into the job force today, like what really matters to folks. Right. And certainly like working at a company that is going to treat them like a human being and, um, you know, really be mindful of their mental health is, is something that is like incredibly important to, you know, folks today in the workforce, arguably more so than ever, right? And so when we built out our strategy, part of it was really centering that, especially because we're a mental health company. And so if we aren't being mindful of the mental health and wellness of our employees, like we're super getting it wrong, (laughs) right? And so we, we, one of the ways we uh, sort of committed ourselves or like to show the company that we're committed to that Um, is that we, you know, agreed that we would have an OKR every quarter that was sort of dedicating, dedicated towards mental wellness, Um, be it, you know, putting in past quarters, you know, we've we've added a benefit or we've done um, like a mindfulness session during mental health awareness month. Um, You know, we, we always are able to find something that we can do that can be like, the particular support and uh, for for that particular quarter, and I think that just having that accountability there is really meaningful. Absolutely, the accountability and also the transparency in kind of the organization really prioritizing this and leaders is really important as well to tie it to to goals that you share. Um, yeah. Another piece of the conversation that you mentioned and I want to touch on too is kind of that feedback realm. That's something that we really value at All Voices too. What role does employee feedback play in your overall company culture? How do you see this really manifesting across the organization, um, making sure that you're not just listening to the loudest people in the room who want to raise their hand and feel comfortable in that setting? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I think we do a lot of the things that are sort of considered best practice in terms of, you know, trying to gather feedback as often as possible rather than, um, you know, doing like a once a year performance review. And like, that's the time when you get feedback, right? So we do these sort of, um, we, we started doing them quarterly and now we're, we're looking at maybe moving them to every six months because quarterly is quite a lot, but these feedback sessions between managers and managees, right? That are more lightweight than a performance review, but really just, you know, sort of a skill will look at um, how is your work impacting the team and how is the way that you show up every day living into the values impacting the team and then we also do you know engage we just did our sort of first big engagement survey now that the team is a team of about 45 you know felt like we had a solid amount of feedback to gather um and so you know that's that's sort of the way we make sure we give folks like anonymous space to to give feedback as well and you know we use that feedback to really point the direction in which we're gonna, you know, continue to build people ops systems and, and operations. Absolutely. You don't want to just ask people once or twice at a specific moment in time. How are you feeling? You want to make sure you keep a pulse on what's going on on an ongoing basis and continue the, the conversation. Um, Ali, is there anything that you're seeing out in the universe? So not necessarily at Mantra, but there are common mistakes that folks are making in their people, talent, or culture strategy today. Um, mm as well? Good question. Um, I mean, I think the worst mistake is just not listening, right? Like, I think the job of the people ops team and arguably managers and leaders is is to be incredibly curious, uh, you know, and always to be, you know, for, for every statement you make to ask 10 questions. You know, in my experience as a, a manager and a people ops person, lots of the time people just need to be heard and you know certainly like we 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 focus on action but we can't build things in a vacuum right like like the the voices of the people who if if you really want to build a community right then the voices of the people in the community need to be part of everything um and need to be part of everything you build when it comes to benefits policies etc right like um really trusting the, the folks um, who you work with to, to be honest with you and share their opinions honestly. Um, 
I think is so important. And, you know, I think that that, I, I would say that, and then I think just being scared of employee feedback is, is probably the second one. Um, you know, especially when it comes to like, um, kind of bottom up feedback, right. It's like, you know, you are, you're, uh, you're putting out the flame if you can't hear it, right? Like when people complain about stuff or what have you, like typically it's the people who are most invested in your company being successful and who are like arguably the most excited about what you're doing, who are going to have the ideas and who are going to push you to think more, right? And I think people, uh, sometimes leaders tend to think like those are the rabble rousers who are holding us back from just doing what we need to do, but like, that's your biggest asset, you know, um, that's like, that's, that's the best thing you can get is people who care deeply. And so, you know, finding ways to put those folks into positions where they can dig into meaty things and really own stuff, um, is the most important. So I think, you know, that would like the in summation of, I think like just being very, very curious is the thing to be. And just, um, you know, not afraid of, of hearing the tough stuff, right? Like you're going to get a lot of tough feedback, especially when you're building a company. Um, but like, you, you know, if you take your ego out of it, you can find the usefulness. Absolutely. And it requires trust on, on kind of both avenues as well. Trust that the team is going to be honest in their constructive feedback and also that they feel psychologically safe and that people are going to actually yeah to them and hear them, not necessarily take action tomorrow, but really reflect that and demonstrate that uh, folks care as well. So they're willing to continue to give that feedback too um, right. as well. And I want to make sure in our kind of time together, is there anything that I didn't ask that you want to share with folks who are listening or underscoring any kind of key takeaways around what you're building and how you're doing it? Good question. Um, no, I think, you know, the, the thing that I think is special about Mantra is that it, it's, we, we've got this really sort of unbelievable balance between um, having a mission that everybody in the company really um, believes in, right, and having like a, a, a job to do that we all really care about. Also, you know, having a group of folks who are very minded uh, around, like, we're also building a big business. And so many times when you work at, at mission-driven companies, those two things are at odds. Um, but, and I, I've heard it called like a values tension, which I think is like a, a really great way to say it. But um, somehow at Mantra, we've figured out like those two things are not at odds and we are able to care about them and like hold them both uh, as, as really important, which just has created this environment where people are just like care very deeply about the work that they're doing and putting out things that are you know at, at a really like high level and I think our employees are inspired by like the work that people around them are doing um and you know I will tell you like having done this for like 10 15 years right like that's so rare and I didn't know that it could and I, I, I like wasn't quite sure it could totally be done in 2022 when you know so many of us are also just so incredibly focused on what a you know scary world we're living in right now um but what I have learned is that like through a lot of dedication and through and when you are incredibly proactive and intentional and you have that buy-in from your from leaders like it really you really can still build a culture that that feels warm and um you know impactful at the same time. So I guess my over under there is it can happen. <laughs> so don't lose faith. It can happen and happens in a really intentional way with a lot of committed, dedicated leaders, people. And I love what you said earlier around the energy that you bring to work shows up in the things that you make, the services you provide, and kind of the trust that you have in your team as well. Ali, thank you so much for being on Reimagining uh, Company Culture this afternoon. Yeah, thank you so much. It was great. Of course, and as a reminder, folks who are listening at All Voices, they really believe in both employees and employers being seen, heard, and understood, and know it's a requirement for the business to succeed overall. Have a great rest of your day, everyone.